Hello, I'm Carolyn Morris Lambert from Niagara Falls, New York, class of 1958. Which school? Of St. Francis de Sales High School, class of 1958. And what if you could tell me, was your first experience in coming here from Niagara Falls day one? Well, I just remember the, uh, the long drive, not only from Niagara Falls, but from the city of Richmond to St. Francis. And I remember my parents and my sister and my brother, we were all riding together. And I thought this was truly the longest ride of my life. And I thought we would never get there. But finally, after coming down this winding road, this wonderful building appeared. And here where I was at St. Francis. That's the one thing I remember vividly. Now, how many years were you in attendance here at St. Francis? I was here for four years. I came here as a freshman and I graduated as a senior in 1958. Uh, was it love at first sight? Well, there was mixed emotions. You know, this is the first time I had been away from my parents for an extended period of time. So, but I, my mother was a person who had the vision for the future, and she always wanted the best for her children. And uh, she saw that I, as a black Catholic, really didn't have the social life in Niagara Falls, you know, as far as the dances and those type of activities and she wanted me to be able to have some enjoyable high school years and so therefore she asked me one day if I would like to go away to school and so after giving it some thought I said well you know that sounds like an exciting thing to do and I guess I was just young and naive and not realize you know I'm gonna be away from my family like, for periods of time but I, I like the thought of, of going you know going away and so um, that summer, she prepared everything, clothing, and I remember going to visit my grandparents, and I came home, and she had everything all ready. You know, whatever the items that were required, she had gotten them ready. And so therefore, I came to St. Francis, and the rest is history. <laughs> and how would you describe your experience here those four years? How would you best describe them? I still well, feel that it was the four of the best years of my life. Even though I was away from my parents and my sister for at least a while, it was a new experience. And after thinking about it, I knew, realized we had students from the major states, you know, in the, of the East Coast, uh, the major cities like New York, Philadelphia, uh, Washington, Atlanta. And I was very impressed. We had students from Costa Rica, Santa Domingo, and the Virgin Islands. And I always thought this is a very eclectic group and students from all you know, these areas and not everybody has an opportunity to go to school with students from on a sort of an international level. Different backgrounds, different family circumstances, but we were all here together going through the same experiences and I just felt that was a wonderful thing. But also I knew that it was a major sacrifice that my parents had you know, taken to provide this opportunity. So I was, you know, appreciative. And my whole family, my grandparents and my aunts and uncles and everyone were, was happy that I was here. And as a result, you know, I had a sister to come two years later. And at first she was very reluctant to come. But I think the fact that we were here together helped her to, you know, adjust. And then after that, I had a first cousin who came to St. Francis and graduated. And then we had some friends from Niagara Falls, uh, two young men that came to St. Emma. So we were like a, I guess a pioneer in a sense because this was a whole new uh, activity for us from a small town in upstate New York. You mentioned uh, you were a black Catholic, so you were sort of a minority within a minority community. Exactly. And all my days as far as school, I was the only black student in my elementary school. And when I went back to college, which was at Niagara University, in the School of Nursing, I was the only black student in that particular uh, university. So it didn't bother me in a sense. I think I was comfortable being away from home, but I was with all African-American students. And so that was, I mean, to me, it was not a problem. 
but I also feel that it's not easy, you know, being the only person and sometimes treated, you know, accordingly. So um, I just feel that St. Francis was a, was a wonderful experience that I'm so thankful that my parents provided for me. Did it ever occur to you at the time, or even shortly thereafter, of your education? Like, you know, you were in Virginia. You were in this Confederate, you know, stronghold where, you know, Jim Crow was alive and well. The other people of color were not able to vote, that they couldn't ride on a bus and, and things of that nature. Right. Was that even consciously in your, in your thought? Or no. And you know, the interesting piece, you know, the uh, interesting about that is that we were isolated. I mean, I mean, literally isolated. We really, we were here at, up at St. Francis, and until we went home, we really didn't know about some of these things. I think back now, as we are in Black History Month, that there was so much going on around us that we were not aware of. And I think in a way, this, the nuns probably protected us. I, mean, I don't know if that's good or bad, but they didn't, we didn't have TV, for example. And we really, we saw magazines and newspapers, but we really and truly did not know what was going on in the outside world. And I think because we were uh, away from home, and uh, I guess they try to protect us, to keep us from getting too homesick and worried about, you know, situations like that. So no, I, I knew that we were in the heart of the Confederacy, because of some other experiences, but it wasn't um, a difficult time. I do remember one young lady who came to St. Francis, she was behind me because she was a student in um, uh, the schools that were being closed because of segregation. So her family sent her here to St. Francis. But uh, no, we were not, we not really were privy to that, and I guess in a way that was a blessing. Okay, my last question is, of all of the experiences in your life that have brought you to this point, this moment, and you are now back on the property, uh, what would you like to have happen or to see happen with this, with St. Francis now, or even St. Emma's, now that we've come to uh, a shell of what it once was? Right. What do you see? What would you like to see? What I'd like to see is that you know we continue the efforts of informing people about the beauty and the history that's here and preserved through historical societies and through uh, whatever other grants are available for the preservation of our history. Um, I, it saddens me that we've come you know, to this point, but it also is, uh, I feel there's hope. I feel that there's an opportunity here with all the um, resources here in our United States that we can preserve this and make it a museum or uh, some type of a, a educational facility so we can bring it back to life. I feel that there's, there is so much history here and it's precious history and we do need to preserve it. So even though it, it saddens me to see that there's disrepair, but I do feel that there's a lot that we can do and together with all the alumni and friends, we can make that happen. Last question. Uh, the year that you graduated St. Francis. Seminary. I graduated from St. Francis in 1958. Uh, any outstanding memory of an incident you may have had with a sister or nun that stands on your mind, or any boy interaction from St. Francis? <laughs> well, um, I remember I have a, a tendency to be late. But I always, you know, I never got any difficulty. And, you know, most of the time I was pretty, pretty popular. But I used to work in the library when I was at St. Francis. I, that was my charge. And I always enjoyed, um, you know, that experience. Because even after I graduated, I you know, was a student at Niagara University. And I still worked at the library, mending books. I was taught to do that while I was here at St. Francis. But when the bell rang, I was still trying to work on something and I would run downstairs and I was always late getting into the line. And I'm st still late even today, but they um, you know, would always call out the number of the class, class and students unrolled and, and it was always one person missing and that was usually me. So that's the one thing I remember. I'm, some things never change and I'm still running late, but the bottom line is that 
I had some neat friends, and some of them I'm still in touch with today. But uh, overall, I just feel that it was a, just a great experience, and I'm just so thankful that I, that I had it.